welcome to this session. Hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a story from the supplementary reader for class 11 snapshots. The title of the story is Ranga's Marriage, lesson 3. We shall look at the work of a writer from the 20th century, a brilliant scholar and writer, Masti Venkatesha Iyengar was a renowned Kannada writer, born on 6th June 1891 in Masti in the Kolar district of Kannada. He was popularly referred to as Masti Kannada da Asti, which means Masti Kannada's treasure. Shiri Ayangar was a topper and gold medalist in MA English at Madras University. He also stood first in the Mysore Civil Services examinations. He was honored with the Gyanpeet Award, the highest literary honor conferred in India and even till date he is widely read and remembered for his short stories. This particular short story begins with the narrator's comment on the title of the story, Ranga's Marriage. Why this title? Some of you may ask, Ranga's marriage, why not Ranganatha Vivaha or Ranganatha Vijaya? Well, yes, he could have used some other mouth filling one like Jagannatha Vijaya or Girija Kalyana. But he then points out that this tale is not about Jagannatha's victory or Girija's wedding. It pertains to someone whom the narrator is familiar with and is named Ranga, hence no fancy title. Then he introduces us readers to the village Hoshahalli. He also claims that no one has heard about his village including the readers. He then goes on to say, it is not your fault. There is no mention of it in any geography book. Not only the English people, our own people have forgotten about it. He then gives the analogy of a herd of sheep. Like one sheep walks into a pit, the rest blindly follow it. When both the sahibs in England and our own geographers have not referred to it, you cannot expect the poor cartographer to remember to put it on the map can you? And so there is not even the shadow of our village on any map. He poignantly states for English people such places were of no significance. Such a big introduction he has given to his story. He talks about his village. He talks why his village is not there on the map because it is a small place. And this story was written during the colonial period. So the English were not concerned about it. So now let us go back to the backdrop of the story. The story is set in a small village during the British colonization of India, a village so neglected that it did not even feature on the map. So in the section, the village the narrator introduces us to the name of the village Hoshahalli. He is proud of his village even though it does not feature on the map or in cultural memory. He goes on to describe his village and says, we have a doctor in our place. His name is Gunda Bhatta. He agrees with me. He has been to quite a few places. No, not England. If anyone asks him whether he has been there, he says, No Annaya, I have left that for you. Running around like a flea pestered dog is not for me. I have seen a few places in my time though. So how he is making fun that you know visiting England is not so great. He, say, he you know compares it to a flea pestered dog. As a matter of fact, the doctor has seen many places, 
the writer subtly criticizes a Britain centric worldview here. He wants his Indian readers to appreciate their roots. When the narrator compares the village to a sweet festive dish, this becomes obvious. He says, my village is like this sweet. The narrator says that the village is famous for its sour mangoes and the creeper growing in the village pond. The leaves of this creeper could serve as good plates for serving afternoon meals. But the narrator Shyama says that real appreciation of the village can be felt only if one visits it personally and gets acquainted with it. He then focuses on the triggering incident that led to the seemingly insig insignificant title Ranga's marriage. Let us move on to the next section of the story. I hope you have opened your books. It is from page 16. So, the first section is over. He has introduced us to his village. He has given his commentary why the village is not on the map, right? And the people of his village, learned people like the doctor are not so keen to visit England. Let us move on to the next section. What happened 10 years ago? Ranga, the accountant's son had been to Bangalore. Now, of course, it is referred to as Bengaluru to pursue his studies. The narrator says that at that time, not many people knew English. The situation is different now. There are many who know English. He says, during holidays, you come across them on every street talking in English. However, back in those days, we did not speak in English nor did we bring in stray English words while talking. Then he narrates one incident. I will read it out for you. What has happened is disgraceful, believe me. The other day I was in Rama Rao's house when they bought a bundle of firewood. Rama Rao's son came out to pay for it. He asked the woman, how much should I give you? Four pies, she said. The boy told her he did not have any change and asked her to come the next morning. The poor woman did not understand the English word change and went away muttering to herself, I did not know what was the meaning. Later, when I went to Ranga's house and asked him, I understood what it meant. So, English was not part of their repertoire because they were not exposed to it. But learners, today we know and understand that languages flourish in each other's company. Languages borrow words, idioms from each other. And that is how, you know, we develop our language. Okay, let us get back to the story. Uh, the narrator adopts a sarcastic tone and he labels English as a priceless commodity. He says, this priceless commodity, the English language was not so widespread in our village a decade ago. That was why Ranga's homecoming was a great event. People rushed to his doorstep announcing, the accountant's son has come. The boy who had gone to Bangalore for his studies is here, it seems. And come, Ranga is here, let us go and have a look. Why English? Has the approach towards English changed now? Let us discuss a little bit about it and then we will go back to Ranga, whether he has changed or he is still the same boy. See today, English in India today is a symbol of people's aspirations for quality in education and a fuller participation in national and international life. Its colonial origins have now almost been forgotten and are considered irrelevant since it is the language of education, communication and commerce. While its initial role in independent India was as a library language, a window to the world, it was felt to be insufficiently inclusive socially and li linguistically. That is when teaching and learning of English was reframed 
and it was made more widely accessible. Today English is one of the many languages in India and efforts are ongoing to ensure that it does not erase or empower India's rich. We can learn a new language, but not at the cost of our own languages. However, this was not the case when Ranga returned. Everyone was surprised to see Ranga was the same as he had been six months ago. When he had first left our village, once they realized that Ranga still had the same hands, legs, eyes and nose, the crowd melted away like a lump of sugar in a child's mouth. I continued to stand there. After everyone had gone, I asked, how are you Rangappa? Is everything well with you? It was only then the Ranga noticed me. He came near me and did a namaskara respectfully saying, I am all right with your blessings. He did not merely fold his hands. He bent low to touch my feet and see what was the blessing. May you get married soon. Generally we hear people saying, may you live long, may your wishes are granted. But here the narrator says, may you get married soon. I said blessing him after exchanging a few pleasantries I left. Now the next part, the narrator compares the crowd to the black whole of Calcutta. Of course, now Calcutta is known as Kolkata. During British colonization, hundreds of persons were kept inside a single room. The next morning, most, most of them were found dead due to suffocation. The narrator uses the expression black hole of Calcutta to suggest the large number of people who had turned out to see Ranga. The next section of the story. The narrator then makes up his mind to get Ranga married. He is coming to the title of the story. The same afternoon, Ranga went to the narrator's house with a couple of oranges in his hand. The narrator thought that such a fine and generous boy should get married and settle down. He inquired about his plan to get married. Ranga said that he didn't want to get married. He was searching for the right girl who was mature enough. He gave the example of Dushyanta and Shakuntala. He said that when they met, they both were mature. He cited another example. I know an officer who got married only six months ago. He is about 30 and his wife is 25, I have told. The narrator is hinting at getting married at a mature age and discouraging child marriage. The story makes the reader think and discuss about this issue. Of course, uh, this issue or has been resolved to a great extent in our country, but still it needs to be told to people. We have a law that you know girls cannot get married before the age of 18 and for boys the age is 21. Secondly, Ranga wanted to marry a girl he admired. He was not in favor of the arranged marriage prevalent in society. Till he got a girl of his choice, he wanted to remain a bachelor. The narrator was anguished to learn about Ranga's views on marriage, but he made up his mind that very soon he would get Ranga married. So does the narrator find an alliance for Ranga? Let's find out. The narrator had in his mind Rama Rao's niece Ratna, a pretty girl. She was staying with them because her parents had died. She was from a big town. So she knew how to play the veena and the harmonium. She also had a sweet voice. He wanted Ranga to see that girl and notice her talent. The next morning, the narrator told Rama Rao's wife to send Ratna to his house to fetch some buttermilk. Ratna was familiar with the narrator as he was a frequent visitor to her uncle's place. When Ratna reached the narrator's house, he requested her to sing a song. 
he noticed that she ha she was also wearing a sari that day. Uh, the narrator then quietly sent for Ranga while she was singing the song Krishna Murti in front of his eyes. Again he is comparing you know her voice to Krishna Murti. Ranga reached the door, he stopped at the threshold. He did not want the singing to stop but was curious to see the singer. Carefully he peeped in, the light coming into the room was blocked. Ratna looked up and seeing a stranger there abruptly stopped. Now Ranga wanted to know who this girl was, what does it matter uh, to us because I am already married and you do not want to get married. Very hopefully he asked, she is not married then. His voice did not betray his excitement but I knew it was there. The narrator says, she was married a year ago. His face shriveled like a roasted brinjal. Look at the example, look at the comparison like a roasted brinjal. After a while Ranga left saying I must go, I have work at home. In this manner the narrator determined that Ranga had liked the girl. Now the next part the narrator and the astrologer. This is the plan. The next morning the narrator met the local astrologer better known as Shastri and tutored him about his plan in Ranga's case. In the afternoon the narrator met Ranga who appeared as disturbed as he was yesterday. The narrator suggested meeting Shastri and enquire about what was worrying him. Ranga did not protest and went to meet Shastri with the narrator. The narrator almost blurted out the truth but the astrologer saved the situation. The narrator told Shastri that something was worrying poor Ranga and they had come to seek his help. The astrologer pretended to do some calculations and said that it was about a girl. To the narrator's question as to who that girl was, Shastri said that she had the name of something found in the ocean, Kamala, Pachhi, Moss, Pearl or Ratna, the precious stone. The narrator's plan succeeds. But that girl is married, I said. Then I turned to him, his face had fallen. I do not know all that. There may be some other girl who is suitable. I only told you what our Shastri indicated. Shastri said, we left the place. On the way we passed by Rama Rao's house. Ratna was standing at the door. I went in alone and came out a minute later, surprising. This girl is not married. It seems someone told me the other day that she was. So what Shastri told us has turned out to be true after all. So that evening the narrator went to the astrologer to thank him for saying what he was told. So this was a plan. The narrator had already told the Shastri to say these things. He did it like it. So what are you saying when he said that you did what I told you? Shastri said that I also did my calculations. I know the Shastras. Do not forget I developed on the hints you had given me. So you must have gathered that with this plan of Shyama, Ratna and Ranga must have got married. Now let us get back to the story 10 years later. Ranga invited the narrator for dinner. What is the occasion he asked? It is Shyama's birthday. He is 3 said Ranga. So Ranga has a son now and he has named him after the narrator Shyama. It is not a nice name Shyama said the narrator. I am like a dark piece of oil cake. Why did you have to give that golden child of yours such a name? What a childish couple you are, Ratna and you. Tongue in cheek, it was said. It is the English custom to name the child after someone. See, if you read the history of England, you find that you know the names of the kings are like K 
King George 3, King George 4. In the same manner, Ranga has named the child after the narrator, Shyama. So, the narrator begins by critiquing over reliance on English and ends up being honored by a British custom. This is also when he bids us goodbye. The story has come to an end. He says, allow me to take leave of you reader. I am always here ready to serve you. You are not bored I hope. Yes, it was an interesting story. So, what is the style of the story? How the author has written his story? The story is a first person narrative and a major portion of the story is in flashback. The speaker directly addresses the reader. The narrator is a neighbor of the protagonist. He has also used a lot of literary devices such as similes to bring in the humor. For example, face shriveled like a brinjal, like a flea pressed dog. So, I would want you to read the story at your own pace, divide it into chunks, enjoy reading the story. When you come across similes or other literary devices, underline them, try to use them in sentences of your own. Now we come to the writing part. Indian society has moved a long way from the way the marriage is arranged in the story. If yes, give reasons. If no, give reasons. So, you have to develop this argument. And also, you have to give your opinion how we can change the system if there is a flaw. I have a small project work for you. Find out how many languages are spoken in India. List the languages spoken or used in your region. Draw or take photographs of instructions, labels, signs or any other form of writing that are bilingual or multilingual. You can also research about free language translation apps, use them and list the three most effective applications. You can even download them or share them with family and friends. With this we have come to the end of this story. I hope you enjoyed discussing the story with me. Thank you for being with us. Happy reading.